G'day, how you going? Look at that little dog there. He's having a great life, bloody good life. I want to show you how my seedlings are doing. I've never grown seeds. I'm not a gardener. I've just learnt to do it, well, I'm trying to learn to do it at least uh, through this time at home. And yeah, I've got this thing for growing seeds in. These are my first ones. So these are lettuces. But I don't know what those ones there are, whether they're lettuces or weeds, I just don't know. So uh, if you're a gardener, person that uh, grows veggies, what are these? Are these ones that should be there or are they weeds? Because there's also one over there. I recognise these as being lettuces. They are mixed. And I learned a very valuable lesson, which uh, next time I do it, is to label everything. And somebody said that on the channel, they said label everything. And you're absolutely right, mate. It's a bit like putting meat in the freezer and not putting a label on it. So I'm going to plant some seeds that I got from Cuddy Cuddy. And I'm also going to now put some chilli and also some capsicum that Hayley gave me and plant that out into a bigger container. This is where the uh, puppies had their run. But here, they uh, ran all over this. And each day we'd put the dirt on top of their, their pee or their poo. Well, clean actually their poo out. And uh, it all broke down. It's quite good soil there. I punched a whole lot of holes underneath the box just to let the water through. This oak tree above me is where the chickens roost at night and all their poo. Like this here comes down the ground, it breaks down in the ground, so it makes a really good dirt. It's been breaking down for years, probably about 15 years. That's what's left. We're also using the sheep poo out of the paddock, mixing that with our dirt as well. We've got some in the muscle boys already that's broken down. Put in there about six weeks ago. So we're gonna mix this up with that. It's gonna give a really good uh, soil with a lot of nutrition for the plants. We're gonna put in there. Yeah, good man. This dirt in here comes out of what we mixed up a while ago from sheep shit in the paddock. And it's a nice rich soil. And the sheep poo's starting to break down now. You can see it there a little bit, but it's breaking down. It's really good. And it's a nice soil, real nice dark soil. Beautiful. Got a few bits of rubbish, I don't know what that is. Bit of old dog roll packet, I think. Maybe a bit of old chunky. Look at the soil. Really nice, rich. So I'm not a gardener, but I've got to tell you guys something. And uh, if you're a person that uh, gets down, and I'm not a person who generally does get down, I don't suffer depression or any of those terrible things that a lot of people do. But I had some pretty, pretty bad news the other day. One of my close mates, my sort of circle of hunting mates, that uh, mate Sneaky, who stayed with me family stayed here, I've stayed with them more than once. Um, I knew he had problems and uh, he's got bladder cancer. And something I'll sort of uh, relate to quite a bit. And I was talking to him when he was in the hospital and I just sort of, the reality of the whole situation hit me and it really upset me. So the next morning I got up, I didn't sleep well that night and I got up and had a coffee. I come out here and I started gardening, getting into this dirt, you know, and um, it's very grounding. I was out here with my bare feet like a hippie, and just the reality of life and death and everything, and it really healed me, being in the garden. I, I'm not a gardener, I'm not good at gardening, because I don't know anything about it, and uh, I'm okay at hunting and fishing and killing stuff, but when it comes to growing stuff, Pretty useless so I was out here in the garden mucking around with the soil and after a while my soul my spirit my emotions whatever you want to call it became at peace with the dirt when I was digging it and I learned something about dealing with uh, sad emotions and on that note uh, you know there's nothing wrong with being sad I think sad's a good time 
people sort of say, oh, don't be sad, but sad's actually something I embrace because when you're sad, it's a time you stop and you reflect what's going on and you think and you problem solve. So out there in the garden, there I was uh, problem solving my own emotions and how I was going to deal uh, with just the hurt of a, another fellow hunter who's got a battle on his hands, a battle I know all too well, and uh, the garden was a place where I, I found my peace. I was able to put myself in the right place because I'm no use to him or anybody if I, if I get too down, but there is a time for grieving and there's also a time for moving on and the garden's a good place to do it, I reckon. So Hayley, who's a chef, and a very good chef, and clearly some of the green finger, she's grown these from seeds herself, and she's given me two chilies, one capsicum. And she's given me some instructions here. It says, keep in warm place, water when soil is dried down to around first knuckle. That's your knuckle there, okay. Uh, they will perk up quickly here. Yeah, they need to perk up a bit. So we've got some really nice soil here, a mixture of chicken poo, sheep poo, a nice topsoil. And look at the look at the nice dark rich sort of oh it just looks so good doesn't it? Wow we've got about six paradise ducks flying over us right now. Boom boom duck tonight. Oh, look at this beautiful plant. Maybe I should have cut the bag, I don't know. On top. I might put a stake in there to hold this this bad boy up. What do you guys reckon? Do I need a stake or should I just let it support itself? I haven't grown capsicum in a planter box like this, so I don't know. I reckon a stake would make life a bit easier for it. Well, it's standing up pretty good. Yeah, and it's got a wee capsicum on there already. An adventure Dan used to work at Nature Smoke, used to get me all the scraps, and I ended up with all these leftover poly bins which are great for gardening and great for all sorts of things actually what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make one big hole and I'm going to put the chili straight in into that one big hole like that rather than try to plant them separate I think that's the way to go so that way I don't muck around the uh, root structure too much oh yeah it's going to be good take these instructions these look great and they still did fall apart a bit but that's okay there's my capsicum and my two chilies and comment below if there's anything I've done wrong or I could add to this guys if you're a gardener just let me know please and I do appreciate your comments I really do what you doing, mate, eh? You enjoying freedom on the farm, eh? Good boy, aren't you? You're a good boy. Good boy, Bixie. You're not really helping much, though. Not really, no. Yeah, I'm going to give these guys a bit more dirt. Can't do any harm, can it? Stop trying to bite me, Bixie. I'm not in the mood for playing. I'm trying to garden. This is my son's old bedroom, but it's also got a lot of light coming into it. The windows are rotten, they're falling out. They're pretty, pretty dopey. There's actually a hole right through that window. We just sneak around in there, you'll see. You can see right outside. But uh, it's a good room for putting plants. And here you can see I've got some lattices that I've seeded just in this little lid. They're going well. And this corner is going to be good because there's the glass on this side and the glass there and the sun comes in so we can put them right on top of the lid of the poly bin. It'll be perfect. And this is your new home, my lovelies. Oh. 
Look at that. And if you're watching the channel, Hayley, thank you very much for the plants. They are uh, very happy in their new home. I might give them a little bit of water. Just a little bit. Just to water them in first time. Not too much. There we go, caps are coming. Gonna, gonna grow happy there, I hope. They are gonna be so happy here. I'm stoked. I'm really stoked. Can't wait to get some nice fresh capsicum off this. And I love using chili and stuff too because I like a bit of heat on my food. Yep, thanks a lot, Hayley. I really think it's awesome that you grew these yourself, mate, and I really appreciate you gifting them to me. Outside, Bixie. Outside. Outside, Bixie. Where you go? Outside. You know what I'm saying. Outside. Outside. Good boy. Put your muddy paws in here on the carpet. That side. Good boy. That's a good dog. Good boy. No, that didn't mean come in. Outside. Good boy. That's a good dog. Oh, you should. Out here, my little paddock with my tray and my knife. I'm trying to find mushrooms. Oh, I just found some while I'm talking to you. Right now. Just down here. Oh, those aren't the edible ones. They're a different type. This one's got sort of like a rough edge. I don't think that's uh, what I'm after. I think that's something else, but I'm going to harvest it anyway. No, that's a. Uh, it could be a puffball, which you can eat. Hmm. But I don't know, and the rule is if you don't know, you leave them. This one, on the other hand, this looks like a nice little mushroom. And this is going to go really well with what I'm going to cook up today. You're supposed to actually give them a, apparently a, a flick. So the spores go on the ground. That's a nice little button mushroom. Look at that. It's beautiful. Wow. But over here is a couple, and I'm going to leave the little wee one. And I might take that button one there, but leave the other one. So uh, we'll just cut him off there. It's a nice little button mushroom. Probably could have got a bit bigger. Give him a wee flick, just so the spores go on the ground. because he's getting bigger every day, aren't you boy? Good dog. There's Bruno on the back. It's a nice big one, this one. Give him a flick too so his spores drop. No, I didn't cut that off very well, did I? Well, we're gonna need more than three for my mushroom sauce, that's for sure. Come on, Bixie. Bixie, come. Bruno's found himself a nice patch there in the grass to go to sleep like a, a lion. Look at him lying down there. Good dog, Bruno. He's a good boy. Pretty hot today, isn't it, fella?
Oh, Bruno's very patient with Bugsy. They're good mates, so he plays very well with them. When I've got a digger, I'm going to dig all this out. I'm going to keep these plants here, these reeds, and I'm going to plant more in. Bugsy, you're going to make a mess down there, mate. And I'm going to make a pond here. A pond so native ducks can come here. Mallards, paradise ducks, everything. Be a really nice place to have a wetland and re-establish the old wetland that's been taken away. It gets fed. You can see my old landlord going up the driveway now in his car. Our mushroom sauce is looking pretty uh, pretty thin so far at this stage. I'll keep on looking, you never know. Might be some more that have popped up somewhere else. Bigsy's enjoying the day out with me, aren't you, Bigsy? And Bruno, well, he's miles away. He only walks when he has to. Look at him. Slowly coming down towards us. Bigsy really takes after his father pace. He's like a little shadow everywhere I go. He's right beside me, or behind me. Good dog. Oh, here we go. Here's a good patch. Some here. Some nice ones down here. Look at these. Oh, happy days. And some big ones over here. This is great. I'll try not to show my excitement too much because Bigsy will come running over and stand on them. So one of my subscribers said that you give them a a flick on the top before you harvest them which releases the spores so they can grow more that's uh, something I haven't heard before but way you go Big Z way you go I can't see it can do any harm nice look at those how beautiful small one there I'll leave that to get bigger one over here this is uh, got a plant growing on top of it Give him a wee flick, a wee cut. Beautiful. The one growing down here looks like it's died there. Look at these beauties, look. It's a nice looking mushroom. Oh, wow, that's perfect. Wow. <laughs> Amazing. It's a perfect mushroom. And this guy here looks like he's on his way out. Don't know if he's uh, going to be alright or not. I oh, know, it's alright. This one's so healthy. Look at the flesh on that. Got a whole family here. Got a small one down there. I'm going to leave that. Release your spores, guys. Take this one. And this one. Oh, I thought I'd cut that one, but I didn't. And who would think that foraging something as simple as a mushroom could bring you so much fun and joy? I'm going to cut this bit off. I don't know if those spores grow, but we're going to put that back in the ground. I'm only going to take what I need, and maybe I'll harvest some more tomorrow. It's a real family of them growing here, some small ones, small one there. I'm going to take this bigger one. He looks like he's a nice healthy mushroom. Oh yeah, look at that. Beautiful. And I'll take this one over here too. Maybe there's two there together. I'll just take one. If I can do that without cutting the other one. Mm. And we'll come back for those when they're a bit bigger. Some beauties growing over here. Oh yeah, look at that. Look. The size of it. Oh, we're gonna, oh, I didn't get that root still. This one here, and here I'll take that one too. Lovely. I've left the smaller ones. Would you look at the size of these? I think these ones are just about on their last legs. 
these guys are monsters. And I'd say that just about come to the end of their life. They're gonna come out right. Look at that. Did I cut it? He's massive. He's a big one too. There's a small one beside him there. I'm just gonna try and get this guy out. Give him a flip, release the spores. And release a few spores there too. And he's not so healthy, he's sort of getting a bit tired. And he's got that nice pink glow, but he'll be alright. Well that there's enough mushrooms to make a really nice mushroom sauce. I'm gonna do cream, salt, pepper, and that's gonna be our sauce for our steaks. And our steaks are going to be the lower part of the back leg of fallow deer wild fellow deer and it's going to be absolutely delicious i'm hungry so i'm going to go and do some cooking bruno's gone to sleep in the grass over there can you see him bruno come bruno come come on boy good job This here's all the green waste we've cut down, clearing all the bush around the house. Bring the sun in and take away the home the rats were living. Look how much we've done. And the kale has dragged the whole lot there and I've chopped it all down. What's that, Poe? Hey, you'd like that, wouldn't you? No. The kale took it for a walk this morning and he'll take it for a walk again soon. He's walked all the dogs while I'm busy doing all the other jobs. Looks like a bit of a clean up going up here, Mikhail. You're cleaning the house? Yeah. Oh, wicked. Oh, mate. What? Oh, wicked. <laughs> What's it? Yeah, I know. I just got them, eh? Wicked, eh? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, this looks good, though. I need to clean out. Yeah. You cleaned it when you first moved in, though, didn't you? Oh, just touched it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, it should be good. This is a go, mate. Hey, I'm going to make some steaks for us. Do some mushroom. Sweet. Hey, you've done an epic job today, man. You smashed out a heap, eh? Like, really had. Right out, let's tear into it. Check it out. That is the food of kings. Fellow deer. And as of Monday next week after midnight, us Kiwis that like to hunt are allowed to go out and hunt if we have a private block to hunt on. We can't go to dock land, which is all of my hunting, pretty much, except for forestry. Not everyone has that privilege of having private land. The only private land I have is the farm here, and that's to shoot a rabbit or a hare or a possum, which really, um, our staple diet is mostly wild pork. Today, we're doing a cream and mushroom, and when I say mushroom, I'm talking like picked just now mushrooms, as you know, with cream that's from New Zealand, grass-fed cattle, great cream. The only other ingredients is salt and pepper. Oh yeah, and one sad, lonely, spring onion so oh can't forget this ingredient just about forgot this garlic grown in the catlins by Stu Dreva and just beautiful big fat garlics we're gonna use a whole one of these with our mushroom sauce it's actually a cream mushroom sauce just gonna cut up one spring onion now and we're gonna do this in the wok I like using the wok, I also like using the skillet, the cast iron skillet, but uh, today it's the wok. And I reckon that might just about do with a touch up. I'm going to try to get as much out of it as I can. I'm going to saute that with a little bit of butter in the wok. But while I'm uh, yanking to you, let's just do some mushrooms. Look at the size of this one. Beautiful. I'm going to take that end off. And look at the flesh in it. That beautiful white flesh, just a lovely mushroom. I'm gonna cut those up like that there. I'm gonna do them in the pan, and I'll tell you what, people, if you've never had steak with mushroom, and, or if you've never had venison, steak with mushroom. This one was just about on its way out, that mushroom there. These are just perfect mushrooms, look at that. Really healthy. Gonna be 
absolutely delicious. And there's a bit of grass on there, but hey, we're not going to lose too much sleep over that. It's all going to go into the pan and it'll be good chomping and chewing. They are just the most beautiful mushrooms I've ever seen. I've got down by my feet here, I've got one little dog who's waiting to pick up something. What you doing down there, Bigsy? He's been with me all day like a little shadow. And you know, having a, a little puppy in your life or a dog in your life just makes life better. Some people are cat people and they'll say you're having a cat around. And honestly, a cat would be great on the farm because of the amount of rats we've got, it'd be good to give them a job, but they don't fare too well with my pig dogs, to be honest. And I like uh, my animals to pay the rent, so my dogs catch the wild pork. So we will be going fishing and we'll be going hunting after next Monday midnight. I think the laws regarding fishing is you can't take a power boat out, I'm pretty sure, but I've also heard that you can take a kayak out or a paddleboard. Somebody correct me if I'm wrong because I intend to take Mikhail out and teach him how to fish because he doesn't know how to fish. Show him how to use a rod, a reel. Go out in the bay here with a couple of kayaks. I've got a spare kayak here which I have bought for patrons and young fellas that I take out. So we'll we put him in the water, see how he goes and see if we can catch him fish. And right now there's kahawai out in the bay. So and there's all our mushrooms done. Boom. So while I'm yakking to you, I'm going to do one garlic. And these garlics, they just, you just can't beat stuff that's grown locally. It grows slow. It gets all the nutrients and all the good stuff. You see, there's a lot of stuff that you can buy from like China and stuff. And I sometimes question about, you know, how did they grow it so fast? And what do they, what do they do for it? Just getting all my stuff off there. And yeah, the wind's blowing the wrong way and it's blowing all of my mushrooms. Oh, well, no fucks given. That's just a very rough way of getting all the outside off before we crush it. And crushing it's the probably easiest way you can get the rest off. <laughs> Down below me I've got one little puppy who's now tasting for the first time garlic skins and finding out he doesn't like it that much. And uh, if you haven't um, seen already, the fastest way to do your garlic is just like place your knife on top and push it down, squash. And then you've got these here that just fall away the outside. Oh, the smell of this is just divine. So I'm going to do the rest of those. And uh, we're going to kick into making our sauce first before we do our... Oh, I'm starting to dribble. Are you dribbling? Can you smell that? So number one good bastard, uh, Stu Driver. He's like a Viking. He's a huge man. I don't know how, how tall he is. He must be like easy six, seven, six. He could be seven foot, I don't know. Big, big bloke. And he's got a big heart. And he's been keeping me in produce forever. Like, ever since I posted my first video. Long before anybody knew what Clay Tall Stories was or who he was. He was the man that was like, looking after me. And he is on the board as the number one good bastard, as you probably well know. And he continues to be a good bastard. Not just to me, but this whole community around him. Very giving. And there's a whole garlic all done. We are ready to put some heat on the uh, wok and stuff making a sauce. About 12 years ago, and I don't really remember when it was, but uh, Bunnings opened up here in Tasman, and they had these barbecues. This one here, well, I think they had two you could buy at the most, and they were 100 bucks each. It was like a, a lost leader to get everybody into the shop. And this one here stayed outside, and it just deteriorated and deteriorated. As things do around here, eh, mate? Because I'm not particularly good at looking after shit. And we use it quite a bit. The plants grew through it, and we used it, we kept on using it, and eventually it ended up in here, in the woodshed. Surprisingly, most of it's fallen to bits, except the main part, which is uh, these here, and also this part which goes down to the gas. I'm heating a wok, and then goes some butter. Look at that, heaps of butter. Nice and hot. Just going to melt that, like that, outside. So I'm still using this as my outdoor cooking device now, and it does the job. It's not flash, but it does a job. Gonna let that burn down a bit. Nice and hot. You getting dizzy yet? I don't want to burn this butter. I just want to melt it down. So we're gonna put our mushrooms spring onion and a garlic and that very shortly. It looks good now, doesn't it? 
spring onions, just like that. Nice, very nice. One whole garlic, lightly chopped, quite chunky. To get that flavour all fusing together in there like that. Mm. Smells fantastic. Let's put some mushrooms in. Just two minutes into it and you can see that mushroom all breaking down. It's all fusing with the garlic. The spring onion, the butter. Now we're gonna season it. My favorite pink Himalayan salt and gourmet pepper, which is a mixture, really nice. And I want a lot of pepper in this because I want a lot of heat in it. Gonna make it almost like a pepper steak. We'll take this off and work better. Gonna go crazy on the pepper. If you like pepper steak, you're gonna love this. I'm not being shy on it, I'm giving it heaps. I want lots of heat in this. It's a whole lot of pepper. Let's roll that over. I want to keep it hot because we want to evaporate the moisture off and keep that nice flavour. We don't want it too watery, so we keep it hot and it, uh, it's reducing nicely there. Mm. Bright salt, again, plenty of that too. Already it's reduced down a lot. Oh, that mushroom's been cooking in there for about six minutes. <laughs> it's beautiful just by itself. Look at it. Absolutely divine. <laughs> I can already imagine what this is going to be like. Right. This is ready for the crane. It's nice and hot so we're getting a real thick Oh lordy lord. No, I'm not going to be shy with the cream ladies and gentlemen. Oh no siree. This is a cream sauce. A mushroom cream sauce. So I'll put about that much in. And it's probably going to be enough. So what we're going to do is we're going to start to cook our steaks very shortly. And when we've cooked them all and we've rested them. We're going to take the juices from resting the steaks and that's going to go into our sauce and we're going to pick that all up again. It's going to be brilliant. Thick, creamy mushroom sauce. And the garlic and the butter, and the spring onions. I've just dropped the flame right down. We're going to let that just simmer while I start cutting up my steaks. What have you got? Hey, what's that? I can see it. That's Mikhail's jandal. Or at least it was Mikhail's jandle. Did you do that? Hey? Naughty dog. Well, I said to Mikhail, don't leave him lying around. That's Pakarood. Right, back to my steaks. Fellow steaks, the food of kings. Who's got a mouth that's watering watching this right now? Because I can tell you, I am salivating something crazy. I really am. This will be the second meal we've got out of this uh, fellow deer uh, rump that was gifted to us by Rookie Brown, Hunter. And we'll get another meal out of that. I might use this for a stew. Oh no, we can get some more steaks out of this. We'll use a whole lot. We'll get four or five meals out of this. You feel comfortable on that bull hide, do you, mate? Mmm, I bet you do. While I've been doing my steaks, this has been just simmering away nicely. Taking up here is my hot plate. It's a bloody cracker, I use it all the time. It's got two sides, the other side's got sort of a, a grill side which I don't use. I always like the flat side, and that's what I'm doing the steaks on today. So we're gonna heat that up now. So while I'm heating the hot plate, I'm gonna smash some salt on this. Yeah, plenty of it. And I'm not gonna stick pepper on, because pepper can burn. If you're gonna add your pepper, your steak, I reckon you're better to do it after she's been just about done. Because we don't wanna burn pepper. Heaps of that. The vegetables I'm doing today are cauliflower and cabbage. And I want to show you this uh, awesome, it's in a wee carry case, it's a two quart camp oven. 
which I take away in the scrub with me. But it's really ideal for doing vegetables with, just like a little pot, you can do a stew in it, or boil vegetables. And this one's oiled, you can see the oil still on there. And we're going to do our veggies in that today. We've got some uh, cauliflower and the humble cabbage. I'm going to chop those up and smack them in. To my thinking, cabbage is one of the best value vegetables you can buy, or grow for that matter. You get so much out of one cabbage, it's actually a superfood. We have it every night, and I like it, it's a good tucker. Hot plate's nice and hot. If you're like me and you're on a keto diet, cauliflower will be your friend, you'll eat a lot of cauliflower. Sort of substitutes the carbohydrates that you're not eating, like potatoes and rice and stuff. These guys on top, these are that. Hot plate's hot, bit of water on there. Right, oh, we're going to start cooking some steaks. Good old chunk of lard. Careful not to get my fingers on that because it's bloody hot. So, starting with our thickest steaks first, which is probably this fella here at the bottom. Not for you, mate. Where you go. Laying away from ourselves on the plate. Number two. Number three. Number four. Number five. Number six. The little baby one. Number seven. Okay, I'm already churning that. Didn't mean on much. Maybe been on 20 seconds. Searing it, it's going to be fast and hot. Yeah, baby one. Got a fat there. Really fast and hot. Fat there again. Well, here goes the game changer. Butter. Whether you're cooking a beef steak, a venison steak, or even doing a lamb chop, that butter. Mmm. Rest those there, then we're going to introduce what comes out of them back into our sauce, give it a heat up, pour it on top, put our veggies on the plate, pour that, and I want to smack a couple of tomatoes on the hot plate just to give some extra flavour into this hot dish. Nobody likes eating these, eh? They just don't, it's so easy to take them out. Just a wee sharp knife, a little curing knife. In my case, it's a pocket knife. I'm going to cut the tomato on each side like this, but we're not going to go right through. We're going to butterfly it, and we're serving on the plate. It's that there, on the hot plate, do that side, turn it over, beautiful. Doesn't need much, other side. Our steaks have been resting nicely, and the juice is going to go in there beautifully. Adding a nice brown to that creamy mushroom sauce. We're ready to eat, we're ready to eat. You hungry, Mikhail? Yeah. Good one, mate, because I've got some tucker. You're just going to love this one. You're going to love it. Bring your plate, mate, and I'll serve it up. How's that sauce taste? You like that? Mmm. 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 That's, that's my description. So mm. is there a word for this or just a noise? Mmm. <laughs> <laughs> just mmm. Mm. I was going to do something today and I forgot. I was going to test your bell line. Do you know how to spell the not name? Bell line? How do you spell it? I-T. I-T? Yeah. What? How do you spell that? No, how do you spell bow line? Clever trousers. B-O-W-L-I-N-E. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you look it up or something, did you? No. I just... Just know, know how to spell bow, know how to spell line. Okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is it bow or is it bow? Bow line is how you said it. Mm -hmm. So, I'm thinking 
so I like it. Yeah, like a bow, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, because the bow of a boat is spelled different, isn't it? I think it's spelled the same, which is just like Is it? I don't know. It's spelled Yeah, I'm not sure. But I think the knot was probably once for bows, eh? Like boats have knots. Boats, yeah, but it was probably for a, a bow, not a the bow. There's it, there's one. Is the knot the bow line, is it for the bow? Or is it for the bow of a boat spelt B O W? Yeah, and then if it is, why do we say bow line and not bow line? Mm. If it's or I was saying it wrong, is it bow line? Mm. Mm. Shit, this is good. Mm. We're only eating one meal a day. You're only eating one meal a day now too, aren't you? Or are you having a sneaky lunch? Well, sometimes I'm having a sneaky rice at night. Oh, rice, yeah. Forget your carbohydrates, yeah? Yeah. Mm. Um, this is the only meal I've had today. It's the only meal you had today? Yeah. So, I'm on a keto diet, and Mikhail's eating what I'm eating. He's getting a lot of fat, a lot of cream. But I've also given him some bags of pasta, some, there's some porridge there for you. There's porridge in my fridge. And you've got a whole massive bag of brown rice and kumara in the fridge, so he doesn't have to be on a keto diet just because I am. And he's got twice as much on his plate as far as meat goes as, than I've got because he's done probably four times as much physical as I have. See, we're on a flight half of aircraft all the time here, right? It's the only problem with this place when you're recording music, look at that. Do you have a, uh, a new word today to finish up on? Or do you have something fast to say? We'll finish this clip off with something that's quite amazing. I discovered that my nephew has got an incredibly fast mind at saying words. Last night, we were watching The Fastest Man in the World, the site Bad from Michael Jackson, and then Mikhail picked up my CD and straight off the top, he said all 20 songs in, I shit you not, would be under 10 seconds. Easy, under 10 seconds, way under. So we'll finish the uh, video up on that. I hope you enjoyed it. Be good. Can't be good. Be careful. Consider joining my Patreon to support the making of these. They take an awful lot of work. I enjoy them, but if you jump on board, you'll get extra content, and it'd be great help keeping us going. And enjoy Mikhail going 100 mile an hour. I'll leave you with that. See you later. So here's something really bloody awesome. Mikhail and I have just been watching the fastest speaking man in the world and he sang, or he actually talked, Michael Jackson. And then Mikhail picks up one of my CDs. This is my Balls Ups, Ballads and Bullshit CD. And he reads off the back. There's 20 songs in the CD, right? It's 18 minutes, like a double. He reads off the back the whole lot, and I shit you not. He was just as fast as the fastest man in the world. I'm not making that up, man. I don't think he could go any faster. Did you read the numbers as well? No, no don't read the numbers, because each one's got a, a, a number. Just peel that off now. This is not practice. He's only just like done this once. Hold that, and give us your best rendition. If you make a mistake, don't worry, but check this out. You ready? Yeah. This is balls up, ballads, and bullshit. As fast as you can do, bro. Bullshit, bull, three cutters down below, buffer hunting, hand fishing, rabbits, keeping hunting, poop, pack, hunter, used to start filling the back of truck, missed my toy, and I like because he wanted to know if he'd be a fetcher, and a thief, the one that got away, copped the cutter, country with a tail of granny, and you mighty fine life, breaking the boots, breaking the boots, flipping them, sticking the air three well about duration 79.55 minutes. Let's try that again. That was fast, dude. You want to try another one? Bullshit, bull, three cutters down below, buffer hunting, hand fishing with elvis, keeping hunting, poop, pack, hunter, used to start filling the back of truck, my toy, and I like because he wanted to know if he'd be a fetcher, and a thief, the one that got away, copped the cutter, country with a tail of granny, and you mighty fine life, breaking on your boots, flipping them, sticking Fee well of dog duration, 79.55 minutes. Oh. Is that something? I couldn't read a fraction of that fast. Okay, here's one that you've never seen before in your life. Oh, it's got really, really funny font. You probably can't read it. Can you read that font? Probably not. Single man in the bush, it's on 60, but he will put battle back. Up at you with that, I got no good enough. Mindy McBurton. You dare, old dog, old dog. <laughs> That's nine <laughs> songs. But this one here, this what, one's just 20 songs, man. What if you do, try to do it in a kind of... Clay Tool Stories accent. Doing a Clay Tool Stories accent, you hold it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> What's that accent? Go. Yeah. Bullshit, well, three guys down, laid by the hunting and fishing without the stupid hunting cookery. The users are cut off the back of a truck with toilet, I think, for his buddy, no fitting ground beer, fetch the thief, the one that got away, country got a company boy. The telegram, any mighty fine life record on your boys, and stick a fear you well, old boy. Fear you well, old boy. That was funny, fast, man.
Anyway, I'm going to be doing more of Macau going fast. If anybody has anything cool for him to recite really fast, turn it below. Something that we can find easy, not that we have something to search, you know, like a song or something. And we'll give them the challenges because I reckon that's, that's a talent, man. Put mm. it there. We're just sitting here having uh, blueberries after eating some fallow deer and watching this guy talk real fast. And then he just picks us up and just goes, I'm like, holy shit. That was wicked, man. Yeah. <laughs> it's been here like four weeks and every day I learn something new, but today that was a mind blower. Wow. Hope you guys enjoyed that, that was wicked.